And good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you. And uh, we're a little different now, aren't we? We're progressing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, 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 the old settee's gone, and so we're in uh, little bucket chairs, but we're quite comfortable, yes, aren't we, that's, darling? Yes, that's actually better. I'm not so leaning over <laughs> as I was the last time. Oh, I was sorry to see that go, though. <laughs> We're still in Kings, <laughs> but uh, before we do anything else, you have a lovely scripture for us. Yes, I'm going to read the first three verses of Psalm 103 from the Passion Translation. It says this, With my whole heart, with my whole life, and with my innermost being, I bow in wonder and love before you, the Holy God. Yahweh, you are my soul's celebration. How could I ever forget the miracles of kindness you've done for me? You kissed my heart with forgiveness in spite of all I've done. You've healed me inside and out from every disease. You've rescued me from hell and saved my life. You've crowned me with love and mercy. You satisfy my every desire with good things. You've supercharged my life so that I soar again like a flying eagle in the sky. You're a God who makes things right, giving justice to the defenseless. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Really good. Wonderful. What a great start. I know, I love that. You kissed my heart with forgiveness and healed me inside and out from every disease. Yeah, Lord, we thank you this morning for your great mercy and your kindness to us. We thank you for your healing and for your restoration. And we pray, Lord, that as we worship you this morning, as we look into your word, as we fellowship together, then we would know your presence, restoring and making things right. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Lovely. Well, before we go any further, I'm going to show you around because we're uh, at King's. Uh, there's been some renovations going on. So hopefully I can uh, give you a little tour and you can see who's here and who's going to be joining us later on. So let's uh, see if we can do that now. We've lost you. Here we go. Now then. Go now then. So we have Ben and Tara. Hi, Ben and Tara. And they're doing all Hi, the techie Church. stuff. <laughs> and we've got Tracy and Ruth Hi. sitting Hi. ready. For their awesome presentation that they're going to bring to us <laughs> later on <laughs> as they bring some testimony you'll also see that the floor's all been um been uh, sanded and uh, here we are a little station that's a camera two and over in the window there's lydia, it's lydia. <laughs> so uh, so we'll be going to be hearing from lydia shortly as well and uh, kings is being being re refurbished, refurbished ready for action, ready for action yeah, in just a week or so's time. So, so that's so. what we're so doing. What we're doing. And, uh, and, uh, and you're, you're with us as well, which is the main thing. And uh, you know, without you, then this. Oops. Here we go. I think I need a mic. Yes. I'm sitting on it. <laughs> so yeah, without you, then uh, yeah, there's no point in doing this. But the thing is, we're connecting together, and we're worshiping God, and we're loving Him. Um, right. Helen and I have uh, two words to bring to you later on, just short ones, and so we're uh, splitting the preach between the two of us. But I think the best thing that we can do now is to switch over to Duke and Morag for uh, a time of worship. So they're going to lead us in worship now. Thanks. Good morning, church. We just want to worship and celebrate God today for all that he's done. And I want you to remember that no matter what's going on in the world right now, no matter what's happening around you, God is still on the throne. And we're going to worship the King of Kings, worship the Lord of Lords. And if you like dancing around your living room, then I want you just to do exactly that. So let's just worship the King of Kings.
just thank you, Lord Jesus, for the, being the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And you know how to look after us and watch over us. You are so faithful. And we just want to honor you this morning for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name. Thank you, yeah, Jude Gamora. Yes. That was so really lovely. Uh, it's great worshiping God together, isn't it? And, yes, uh, it lifting is. up His name and 
It's been so good that throughout this lockdown period, then we've been able to do that, been able to do it every week. Yes. And yes. Uh, so for the moment, then we're continuing to meet like this. The restrictions uh, on meeting in person are uh, really just a bit too restrictive um, for good reason. So until those are lifted, then we're going to um, be like this. But we can have a few more people gathering yes, together yes. as we uh, do the online church for you. Yes. And hopefully next week, then we're going to be in the River of Life Church in our normal church building on the stage. Uh, mm -hmm. But you can't come. <laughs> Except this way. <laughs> Isn't that an awful thing to have to say? You can't, can't come to church. I know. Oh, dear. Strange times. Yeah. I love but, that song, though, that last song that uh, we were singing, A Great Is Your Faithfulness, and, and talking about um, there'll be a season of joy and weeping and, and that. And I just think, you know, God is faithful in every season, mm -hmm. you know, the good ones and the bad ones, the grey days and the sunny days. And it's it's so good to be reminded of God's faithfulness. You know, That's I right. lift my eyes. I won't forget That's how great your faithfulness. It's good. It's yeah, very good. Yeah. Lovely. So we're going to share bread and wine communion together, as we've done every week throughout lockdown. And Davy and John are at, are at home, and they're going to lead us in that now. So grab your bits and pieces. We've got some little cups and uh, some pieces of bread, so mm -hmm. anything like that, uh, so that you can join together with us. Thanks, Pastor Mark. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Uh, yeah, yes, like uh, Mark and Helen were saying, we're about to share communion. I'm going to read from First Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, from verse 23 to 26. So this is Apostle Paul's words, reading from the New King James translation. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Thank you, God. Mm -hmm. Verse 25, in the same manner... He also took the cup after supper, saying, This, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Thank you, God. For as often as you eat this bread and drink drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. We were just thinking about um, how great is his faithfulness toward us every day, mm -hmm. even without us um, realizing it sometimes, you know, we're unaware of it. And I think um, communion is a great way for us to together gather and, and worship God mm -hmm. by remembering you know that he's always been faithful and that mm -hmm. he always will you know his promise is forever and this is this is super exciting so I'd like to invite you guys to join us in prayer right now thanking God for what he's done for us thank you Jesus thank you for this Sunday morning mm -hmm. thank you so much for um gathering together as a church thank you god that we are learning we have been learning these past few months um that church is not the building church was not the building it never was church is us church is the people church is wherever we are gathered um under your name so thank you that we're doing church right now and we continue to do church and that although so many things shut down throughout lockdown, church was one thing that did not close. Amen. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God, that we remain open. We are here to worship you. Uh, we are um, 
celebrated communion. We want to thank you, God, um, for your faithfulness. Thank you for dying on the cross for us. Yes, thank you for setting us free mm-hmm. and for giving us a new life. Thank you mm-hmm. for being alive today mm-hmm. and being our hope. In Jesus' name, I pray that we will never forget mm-hmm. what you have done for us and what you do for us every single day. In Jesus' name, pray for everybody out there mm-hmm. um, that is has just joined us with communion right now. Jesus, I pray for um, healing and restoration and hope in every single home that is connected right now under your name. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Jesus, for the family that we are mm-hmm. through you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah, like when you were saying, um, just remember we said, thank you for all that you've done and all you're doing. It's just um, it's just wonderful because, um, uh, yeah, we're moving on to prayer now. But before we get into that, um, another prayer. I mean, I uh, just wanted to uh, share with you guys a couple of, a handful of like actual praise reports from people in our church and other people as well. Um, so uh, there's a praise report from a hun- handful of people and being thankful that they're finally able to see more and more family and friends again, because I think now that you can see more people, obviously socially distancing, but um, and you're able to travel a bit further than just staying in Dumfries. And so just a handful of people being thankful and feeling blessed and loved that they're able to see um, their family that they've not seen in ages and their friends that they've not seen in ages. And there's also a praise report um, from Viv, and she's thanking God uh, for... Her dad's partner, thanks Lydia, uh, who was sick, but now she's recovered without needing any um, hospital hospitalization or any liver operation. Wow, that's, that's really, good. really good. Yeah, and also another praise report from Louise as well. Um, so her stepdad underwent a major surgery for prostate cancer, and things didn't look too good after that. But since then. And um, recent tests and scans showed result. The results show that he's actually recovering quickly. The results and health improvement that doctors um, estimated that usually would take two years only took three months. And Come even on. Louis said, "God really does produce miracles." Amen. Amen. Yeah. So good. So yeah. So those are the prayer reports. Um, so, uh, the praise reports. I mean, and also we have a few prayer requests as well. Um. A uh, few people have asked for prayer for healing and restoration as well. And um, so, yeah, so if we just um, close our eyes and bow our heads and let's pray together. Okay. Yes, Jesus, thank you, God, for all of your blessings, yes. um, not just for the big blessings, um, but also for the small daily ones that sometimes we can easily take for granted. Yes, God. Um, thank you, Jesus, for always looking out for us and for the strength to give us each day and for all the people loved ones and families around us with yes. who make our lives more meaningful thank you lord for being our sure and sturdy foundation or anchor yes in this life that you know that can be quite random and predictable and uncertain at times thank you for all these praise reports that we've just read earlier lord the praise reports of um, miraculous restoration and healing and getting together with friends and being together with families and loved ones again after a long time of lockdown. Yeah. Father, thank you for all that you are and all that you've done and are doing for us. Thank you, Lord, Lord um, the Bible, your word talks about um, healing and promises of healing and restoration. And we thank you, Lord, for all the miracles you still perform today. Yes. Father, we take hold of those promises over your children, over those people who are sick and unwell at the moment. We believe that you, God, are, he- are our healer yeah. and that your name is above above all names, Lord. That's right. And that no illness is too big for you. Jesus, we pray and ask for your miracle and healing for these people right now in Jesus' name, in your name, God. Right. Please, Lord, we pray that you would cover them with your blood, you would cover them with your peace, strength, and give them the faith to believe that everything is possible for you, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Lord, um, we thank you for your guidance and your grace and that your mercies are new every morning. We call upon you, Holy Spirit, um, to lead us and move boldly in us in our lives, Lord, as mm-hmm. we go to our day-to-day lives. May we long for your presence more and more and more than anything, and may 
and you help us grow in spirit right. and teach us and keep us close that we will walk closer with you god amen and um, we love you and we honor you god thank you again for everything jesus and um, this is our prayer in your name amen amen oh yeah Pastor, what was saying about prayer at six o'clock yes that's one thing as well so we tonight <laughs> don't forget um at 6 p.m through mm-hmm. the whatsapp thread um our church continues our prayer meetings up um we, we used to gather every single sunday anyway at six um in kings but because we're not able to do that we're continuing that mm-hmm. through the whatsapp and and the information is right there it's it will be through the whatsapp group so let's we'll see you there yeah lovely thank you so much for that and uh, yeah uh, we'll get the number for the whatsapp group on the on the screen before we finish and uh, also at the end of the service then all the contact details will be on the screen for you now um, we have uh, some sad news and on Wednesday then Arthur Smith sadly passed away I mean sad for us happy for him Um, he had been ill for for a little while and he'd been in hospital and then was uh, transferred into Lochtua nursing home and um, I'm really privileged to be able to be there as he passed away and to to just minister to him and read some scriptures over him and pray with him and uh, and then just be there as he Mm. drifted away and so it was a very sad moment and I have to say I shed a tear or two as, as I think probably all of us have been doing because Arthur was such a loved man and he didn't have a lot of family Uh, just one or two people were around um, you know his niece uh, living down south and then one or two people who have been close to him while he's been living in Dumfries along with Ellie of course his uh, late wife and so um, we are his family and he, I know, really appreciated all that our church did for him. And, you know, I remember all the meals that we used to take to him and uh, the, the visits and support that we gave to him uh, after Ellie had passed. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know that he would want me to thank you for that. We don't have a date yet for the funeral, uh, but we will be taking it, you know, f- with our church, probably not in our church but the date is still to be fixed. Uh, and actually, if it's in a week or two's time, then it may be that more people can be there. And uh, I'll keep you posted with all of those details. But in the meantime, then, thanks for your prayers for Arthur and for all your support of him and for him over the last few years. And uh, we know that he's now rejoicing with the angels in heaven and together with Jesus. And what a wonderful thing it is to know and to have that assurance Mm -hmm. that death isn't the end, it's only just the beginning. And Arthur had that strong assurance. He wasn't scared of death. He got all his affairs in order and uh, he was was ready to meet his saviour. So uh, perhaps we can pray for all of us as we miss Arthur and also pray for the arrangements and pray for his, his needs and and the other um, more distant family members. And Lord, we thank you for Arthur, and as his family, his church family, then we do mourn his uh, passing. But Lord, we rejoice also because we know that he's free from all of those restrictions of a body that was tired out, worn out, and uh, the Lord is now with you. And so we thank you for that assurance, and we thank you for all that you did Jesus to make everlasting life possible for us and uh, to to make the way for us to spend eternity in heaven with you so we we bless Arthur and uh, we thank you for your care over him Amen. Mm. Amen 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 so we are uh, inviting you to give and we're at um, the next phase as i was saying before in terms of how we do online church and whatever happens then in the future we're going to continue to do online church as well as physically meeting together 
And so in order to do that, we could do with increasing and developing our system further. At the beginning of lockdown then, Helen and I asked for a thousand pounds and that was to buy a new computer, a new PC and some other bits and pieces. So uh, that week then a thousand pounds came in and praise the Lord for that. We were able to invest in that, which has made all of this possible. Now we could do with a new camera and some other pieces to go with that. And so another thousand pounds or two will be really, <laughs> really great. So if God moves upon you to give specifically to this, we would love you to respond and it would make uh, what we do in church even better as we return next week. So uh, don't delay, get it done straight away. And uh, we would love to, to receive that from you, whether it's a small amount or whether it's a large amount, then uh, today's offering is going to media. So shall we pray mm. as we prepare to do that? And Lord Jesus, we thank you for all of this digital technology that we've been able to use over the past few weeks and that it uh, really enables us to do things that otherwise would be impossible. And so we thank you for people who have given. Uh, but now, Lord, we pray for this extra fund so that we can uh, take it to the next level, not just for the remainder of lockdown, but for our hybrid church, which mm. will go on months and years beyond that as well. So Lord, we pray your blessing on every giver and every tither as well yes, as people you, give faithfully out of the money mm. that you've given to us and you've provided for us <coughs> through our jobs and through all kinds of other ways. <coughs> and we bless you that you are our <coughs> provider, Lord. Amen. Amen. Exciting, Amen. isn't it? Yes. It uh, I, I find it quite interesting that, you know, God makes provision for us to be involved in the media when there is so much doubt about media channels and media activity these days. You don't know whether what you're hearing, what you're reading is real and true mm. and not slanted. And I think what an opportunity to bring God's word, which is truth, yeah. uh, to counteract a lot of yeah. the negativity and a lot of the suspect sort of things in yeah. the media these days. So it's reclaiming the yeah, uh, it is. reclaiming the media, isn't it, for, for yeah. God's use. I remember when uh, we started to bring, this a long time ago, when we started to bring uh, sort of more modern music into church. Yeah. And I think it was it Cliff Richard that said, <laughs> why should the devil have all the good music? Yeah, well, I think that was the uh, William Booth, the oh, founder it? of the Salvation Army well, originally. I never knew that. Yes, I think it was. So, but why should the devil have all the good media? Yeah. So let's uh, <laughs> let's reclaim the media for God. Uh, so yeah, thanks for adding yeah. to that, and it's really exciting. We'll be able to report to you on yes, Sunday. That's right. Uh, what's happened? Brilliant. Absolutely. And I have a praise report. Yeah. I have a haircut appointment this week. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> well, I have a haircut appointment as well. It was oh, last yes. week, but you didn't do it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fine. rectify I'll that. Really Postpone till this week. <laughs> uh, it really chuckled uh, on whatever day it was when the barber shops opened up. Yeah. And they're going down English Street. Queues of people. <laughs> and both of those barbers. Queues of men. All men. And uh, with kind of long hair. <laughs> then every time I've gone past since, there's still been cues. Cues, really? So, yeah. Uh, catch, up, catch, catch up time. But Helen always does mine, so that's why it looks so good. <laughs> <laughs> right, we've got uh, Lydia. Uh, so, Lydia at the window. So, we're going to pass over to Lydia now. lesson was based on Ephesians chapter 2 1 to 10. We have learned that our God is rich in mercy and 
that he loves us so much he made us anew in Jesus Christ so we can do all the good things he has planned for us. Uh, he saved us by his grace when we believed. Hi, I'm Dawa and God made me special and he will love me forever. I am the apple of God's eye. God is my strength and my strength. My name is Katrina. I'm special because God loves me. When God loves me, I feel great about it. God made me who I am and God made me in a special way. And in God's word, God has promised me that I will be great and that he will always be there for me and that he will love me forever. I know who I am. I am some tornado and I'm God's masterpiece. God God promised me that he never let me down and provided me with all my needs. but hopefully you guys can hear me now. Amazing job for our kids. They have done an awesome job. It's always so great to hear from them. Also, we have a lot of cool things happening this week and a bunch of opportunities for you to join us online using Zoom. So I'm gonna just share about that really quickly. Uh, first of all, on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. we have Together. This is a way for us to study the word for, together and we have been getting to hear from different members of our community. Uh, so I personally, I get a lot out of this and I highly encourage you to check it out. It's open to everybody. Um, again, that's Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Also for the ladies on Tuesdays at 7.30 p.m. and on Fridays at 11 a.m. we have the coffee room. This has been another way for us to stay connected throughout this time. We have been catching up throughout the week and so if you are available and would like to catch up with some other familiar faces, you are welcome to join us ladies. Again, it's on Tuesdays and Fridays. Also, we have an opportunity for you to join us following today's service. Um, so if you'd like to join us after the live stream, we have a wee catch up. You can grab a coffee, get yourself a biscuit, and join along and catch up with other familiar faces from our church community. Lastly, if you are a member of our youth group or would like to are the right age and would like to become a member of our youth group, uh, you can reach out to Devi using the number below. Uh, he will get you connected. He's our youth pastor. He does an amazing job. And we've been meeting through Zoom uh, throughout the whole lockdown. And we're starting to phase out of that a little bit. So if you'd like more information on how to get connected, reach out to Devi. Uh, let's see. Oh, also, we are going to get to hear from a couple members of our community now. Uh, so I would like to welcome Tracy and Ruth. Let's give them a round of applause. All right. Welcome, Tracy and Ruth. Hello. Hello. There you are. <laughs> so, yeah, it's really good to be here. Um, it's it's kind of strange actually getting up and getting dressed and coming out. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's uh, just watching church in your pajamas, and uh, so yeah, that's so yeah, it's nice to actually get out and 
put your makeup on and get dressed and um yeah so i've really enjoyed that um during lockdown um i just really felt that uh you know god was encouraging me to just have peace during this time and to just put my trust in him um i just wanted to share some scriptures with you um in philippians 4:19 it says and my god shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by christ jesus and at the beginning of lockdown uh, my husband was uh, his his business where he works at the restaurants that was closed down and we didn't know what was happening uh, with regards to furlough or not we didn't know whether he's going to be furloughed but um, I just had such a peace because I just knew that God was going to meet all our needs and I didn't have to worry about about what was going to happen and um, yeah so he did that it, uh, he was furloughed so he was he was um, we got money coming through and uh, he is now back at work, praise God, um, and he is busier than ever. So that's that's just awesome. So I'm kind of in a new season now with him working all the time. Um, and yeah, so it's just me for me mostly <laughs> and the dog. Uh, but yeah, that's, so that's good. And um, I just wanted to share some more scriptures because God has really been encouraging me to just get so much into his word and I've loved this this quiet this quiet time where in the morning I can just come down and I can just get into his word and you know Jesus said um you know his word is bread of life and and I've just really felt that it's like it's, there's just so much in his word and and so in isaiah 26 3 he says you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you so i would just encourage everyone that um you know we can we can put our trust in god um and he will give us peace yeah there's so much going on in the world just now but our peace can be found in him if we trust him you know he is so faithful he's so loving and um he just wants us to put our trust in him and in john 14 27 jesus said peace i leave with you my peace i give to you not as the word world gives do i give to you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid so yeah i would encourage you to just seek him because he is our peace, he is love, and he just wants you to reach out to him and just be um, reassured that he's got, he's got this, you know. Nothing has taken him by surprise, and he is in our every day. God has, he doesn't change. It says that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we can stand on the rock and know that he is for us and he's not against us. Amen. That's great, thank you. And sorry about those uh, little sound problems that we had. <laughs> but we're getting there. Every yes. time we do a little bit more, then uh, we stretch the boundaries, don't we? Yes, stretches us, it's very good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mark and I have talked a lot together this week about um, what's going on, what's happening. We've been um, working I haven't been working here in Kings. We've had some great volunteers doing some hard graft here to make this place look good for when we reopen. But uh, we've talked a lot about um, what the future looks like, what what it's going to happen, what we're going to do, what can we do, and some of the issues that uh, come up on the news. And it, it, you wonder how much um, truth is coming out of that. You can find one report. And then on another hand, you can find another report which is saying the opposite. And it's really hard to discern sometimes the truth of and reality of what is going on. And so I think we've had to sift this week what we bring 
in what God wants us to bring to you. And I think I found that quite difficult. I've, it's like being juggling with lots of balls to, to find which one is the one to catch for this particular moment. So this is why Mark and I are sharing this time. Mark's got something probably more weighty on his, in his heart than I have. I've got a bit more of an encouraging thing. So he's going to go first and lay it heavy on you, and then I'll do the lighter <laughs> stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. I get you all down, and then she brings you back up again. <laughs> Not quite like that. So um, thinking about the current situation, then um, I've been really quite aware that we, in this season... Uh, find ourselves characterised by two things in society, uh, besides the, the lockdown itself. Number one is a desire to play, blame other people at mm -hmm. every turn. And number two is uh, like a super sensitivity to being offended. And yeah. I think that these two are a consequence of a bit of a sort of unstable and insecure society. The, the stresses are on. And so what happens to human beings when the stress comes on, then we revert back to things that aren't really so good. And, uh, and those things, a desire to blame people and then a super sensitivity to being offended seem to be really coming to the surface. Mm. And uh, I don't think it's productive. It's not helpful for our society when there's so much blame culture and so much about being offended and and uh, you know being being super sensitive, and basically those things collide at the moment, and so you know become even worse. <laughs> <laughs> so Helen said it was going to be a way too much, so but don't you see that around that uh, you know it's kind of all gets quite frantic, and we see it in the media especially as people are saying this and saying that and contradicting him and contradicting her yeah. and contradicting the ones in between and whatever it might be, then uh, it, it, we all kind of sit back and think, well, this is a little bit crazy. It's a grumpy society that this produces. And uh, personally, then, I've had plenty of times when people have said offensive things to me, and you probably have as well. And as Christians, then... Some people just don't like what we stand for. Uh, they don't like the fact that we talk about Jesus. They don't like the, talk, the fact that we talk about sin. They don't like the fact that we talk about heaven and hell. Uh, the many things which people can find offensive. And so therefore, we end up being on the other end of people's aggravation. And it's quite easy then for us to feel offended because people can be nasty to us. Not all the time. Lots of people are very nice to us as well. But, you know, there are times when we face that um, spiritual reaction. Mm. And it's really important that we handle that in the right way and recognise that we actually have an answer. And I've got four, I think it's four Bible uh, passages which are really exciting I think and you might not have come across them before the first one is in Ecclesiastes and it's chapter 7 verses 21 and 22 and so the writer to the Ecclesiastes says do not take to heart all the things that people say lest you hear your servant or we can translate that as colleague as well because we don't really have servants today but we hear, hear your servant cursing you your heart knows that many times you yourself have cursed others. So the key thing there is don't take to heart all the people, all the things that people mm. say about you or say to you. Sometimes people do say stupid things. They do say things in the spur of the moment. They do say things in the, in the heat of an argument. So don't take all those things to heart because it's very easy to be offended especially when that's what everybody else is doing in society. Let's be different yeah. as Christians. Yeah. Hard to offend and uh, really secure and able to let those words go over uh, yeah. the top of our that's head. Right. I know that's not that's always easy, but the thing is that the Holy Spirit will help us as we reach out to him. And Jesus said this in Luke chapter 6. So this is Jesus' words. Blessed are you 
in verse 22 and 23. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, and revile you, and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. How about <laughs> this? It's a good translation also, this English Standard Version, ESV. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven, for so their fathers did to the prophets. So, so basically, you know, it's going to happen. Mm. So don't get upset and don't get surprised and don't get offended yeah. when people say things that you don't like to hear. How different it is or would be in society if we were all to take that sort of stance and, uh, and, and not, uh, you know, like be quick to take offence. Now at the moment we have uh, a bill going through the um, Scottish Parliament and at the moment it's in a review stage and uh, I made a response to this in a couple of ways. Uh, last year there was uh, a call for evidence, it was just like touring the country and some of us went to Lockerbie to um, feed into the Scottish Government and it's the Scottish Government's hate crime bill. And so there were people there who took notes, we had little workshops and things. And then after that, then uh, I made a representation in the, um, where, where the, when the opportunity was there to be part of the consultation. Now it's now in the stage where they're looking for evidence, it's called, but calling for views it is really. And it closes, I think it's the 24th of July, so it's just the middle of next week. and. Uh, and it sounds like a hate crime bill. Well, we don't want to, we don't want any hate, do we? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, who wants hate in Scotland? We don't want hate. The problem is that um, it's, 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 it has a lot of potential potholes and uh, things which, which may uh, impede free speech. In fact, almost certainly would impede free speech. And so um, it could criminalise speech merely because it's deemed offensive to certain people. So even though it may not be spoken offensively, then because some people may take it offensively and take offence, then it could uh, constitute a criminal act. And uh, so it's the stirring up hatred section of the bill, which is, which is what people are worried about. Uh, and because, you know, who knows whether me saying something about Jesus is going to stir up hatred in someone else. And uh, we know from experience that sometimes it does. If uh, we talk about the things that we normally talk about in church in terms of right and wrong, good and evil, sin and things like that, then we can upset other people. And that could then constitute a crime uh, that we will have committed. So um, potentially it can have quite a chilling effect on these free speech issues. Well-meaning in its intention, but um, far-reaching in its potential to suppress free speech and freedom of expression and freedom to share the gospel. So just taking from the Christian Institute, who have particularly raised this, then uh, they say there are a few major flaws. I'll just whiz through them quickly. You can go on to uh, christian.org.uk, I think is the website for that. But the word hatred is really subjective and it's quite hard to define. And the, uh, they, they cover speech in the bill as merely abusive. So abusive is a very vague term. You know, you could say something to me which I think, well, that's really abusive. You're just making a joke or you're just kidding me on or you're just expressing your opinion. Um, in the, the bill, then, it's quite easy for an offence to be committed unintentionally. So there's no harm intended, but harm was, was accepted, uh, even though it wasn't given. Uh, you could be prosecuted for words spoken even in the privacy of your own home. So that's quite intrusive. And the, there is a free speech clause, but it's really very vague and, uh, and thought to be quite inad inadequate. Now, on Friday, then, a new organisation was 
was um, formed or a new uh, campaign anyway uh, and you can find all of that on uh, free to disagree dot scott and it's uh, the free to disagree campaign and it's uh, arranged by the christian institute but it's supported by some really interesting organizations people jim sillers mp who was formerly former deputy leader of the smp there's uh, stuart Wayton who's a criminologist at Abertay University and a champion of free speech. And here's a really interesting one. The National Secular Society has joined with the Christian Institute in saying we're going to campaign together. Isn't that something amazing. quite amazing? Hey guys, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. National Secular uh, Society has something in common with the Christian Institute. And, and the thing is that the secular society argues that no one should be disadvantaged on account of their beliefs. Mm. So, um, so it's, it's fascinating and other people are beginning to join as well. And uh, people like, I think, Roland Atkinson and other um, people involved in, in the comic arts, you know, and people that want to satire and things like that. Who cares? I mean, I don't care if people say what they want about Jesus, they do all the time, or, or about me. Um, the main thing is that they need to feel free to disagree, and we need yeah. to feel free to disagree. Mm -hmm. So I feel quite, as you probably realise, I feel quite passionate about this. And I will be making a representation on behalf of the church. So if you've got anything you want to say to me in relation to that, then please feel free to get in touch. But uh, Monday, Tuesday, then I'll be putting something together and firing that off to the Scottish government as being the River of Life Church is really concerned about the implications and potential implications for free speech about this bill in the way that it stands. And uh, I believe that people all over the place are doing the same thing. And we want to support government. We want good government. We want mm. good laws. Uh, but when you see something which has the potential to, to cause uh, a real shutting down of, of the freedom to say things in society, then uh, however well-meaning that was in the first place, then uh, we really want to take action now. Otherwise, if we don't take action now, then, um, you know, when it becomes law and then people are being prosecuted, then, well, we didn't do anything about it, did mm. we? So if you want to take action as well, then you can do that, free to disagree Scott, and you can find out there how to join the campaign and how to make your own representation as well. So leaving that aside for a moment, then, uh, and I don't think it's about politics, by the way. I don't think it's about, you know, political leanings, left, right, parties and things like that. It's simply about the principle of being able to speak freely. Okay, enough said. <laughs> uh, so what about your heart when it comes to offence? Then we're coming into a season where we're going to be talking about relationships. And uh, next Sunday, then, Helen and I celebrate 40 years of happy married life together. And it's actually on the day, so join us next Sunday for our anniversary celebrations. <laughs> uh, as we actually, hopefully, return into the church building to do online church there. So we can have a little party, can't we, guys? <laughs> <laughs> but what about our heart, you know, because... Uh, we want to find out ways and share ways that we found to make marriage work for us for 40 years. But uh, it's not just about marriage, it's about all mm. kinds of relationships. Marriage is one of the most intensive relationships. So what we can learn from marriage spreads then into all kinds of other relationships. Mm. One of the things that we've learned is that we cannot take offence. No, that's right. We can't be offended. <laughs> we just make it a no-go area. Because if you do, then you start to take corners and then you start to say nasty things and think nasty things about the other people and it becomes a war. Marriage is not about war. <laughs> it's, about, it's about friendship. It's about togetherness. And it's about working out problems. Of course, there are times of disagreement, but we can agree to disagree. Same principle holds. Mm. So, um, taking offence, I believe, is one of the greatest enemies to good relationships. And we can choose, it's all in the phrase, isn't it, taking offence, that we can choose not to take offence. That's offense. right, yeah. It's in our, it's in our grasp. Uh, when somebody says something to us, it can be like a bait. You know, you've ever been fishing, Eddie goes fishing, 
and uh, so you go you go fishing and uh, you know you throw out the bait on the end of a string now you know fence can be like that the bait falls in front of our face and we can decide whether we're going to go oh, and bite that bait but no miss the bait is not good because it's got a hook inside oh, that's right and as soon as you bite the bait you bite the hook <laughs> And the hook gets into you and then you become controlled by it because mm. because you know you get reeled in and it's it's so um it's so it's so cap capturing yeah and so uh, proverbs 19:11 is great i bet you haven't noticed this one over before too proverbs 19:11 good sense makes one slow to anger and it is his glory to overlook an offense it's your glory to over, overlook an offence. It's like dignified. It's, it's like I'm bigger than that. I'm higher than that. I'm stronger than that. And so I refuse to take offence. Isn't that great? I yeah. love that. I love that scripture. And then we've got 2 Corinthians. This is my final one. And then I'm going to pass over to Helen. 2 Corinthians <laughs> 12 and verse 10 says, For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weakness, weaknesses, sorry, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So here's Paul speaking. He knew what it was to face all of those things. What are their weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, calamities? He had a lot, and yet he refused to take offense. He knew that when he was weak, when it, when it was really difficult, when he was struggling, then actually that was the place where he could be, become strong. So, you know, not to take the bait, not to take offence is not an easy thing to do. But we need the, the help of the Holy Spirit. We need the anointing of God in order to do that. When I'm weak, and you know, it's fine to say, oh, I find it so easy to take offence. Acknowledge your weakness. But Lord, come and help me to strengthen mm -hmm. my resolve and to strengthen my my uh, ability to take those persecutions to you to take those potential offensive comments to you so that it doesn't penetrate and god will really help us you know jesus himself was 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 the one who was persecuted the greatest but also jesus was was the one who 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 offended people you can't put it any other way mm. the reason that he was crucified was because people took offense at what he said so finally then there are times when you may create the potential for other people to be offended now don't let it be like a bait and a, and a hook them in it's not for you to control somebody else by offending them but actually it comes as a consequence sometimes of telling the truth and we have to be not scared of mm. upsetting people um you know we don't go around just to upset people <laughs> that would be really bad but um when it's a matter of you know either telling the truth or keeping quiet when the truth needs to be told that's right then we need also the power of the holy spirit mm. in our weakness as paul experienced in the in the middle of the potential rebound then we need to be ready to tell the truth and sometimes the gospel is offensive to people mm. who don't want to hear it. We don't ram it down their throats, of course. But if somebody um, you know, asks us, and, and if we're just living our lives as Christians, then sometimes uh, what we do and what we say is offensive. And so uh, don't back off from that simply because somebody may take offense. It's not your responsibility over whether they'll take offense. As I say, don't intentionally do it. But if it comes as a consequence of what needs to be said, then please say it. hope you're getting my heart with this and, um, and, and recognize that the truth sometimes offends. So that was a heavy one. <laughs> and uh, I'll pass over to Helen for the, for the, uh, the love lifting one now, which is, uh, <laughs> which is going to finish, yes. finish off it's, on a high it's note. It's the taking offense, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah and actually, uh, if you look at what Jesus said about forgiveness, then mm -hmm. forgiveness is the deflecting of offense, isn't really it? Is. it? It's, it's a, a choice that point. we have that says, I won't take offense mm -hmm. by what they say, but I choose to to forgive and release them from yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Peacemakers really, isn't it? Yeah, it is. 
But there's a difference between peacemaking and peacekeeping. Peacekeeping, yes. Peacekeeping sometimes just keeps Shuts quiet. Up, yes. Yeah, you're going to yeah. pacify everything, you yeah. want to keep everything, keep everybody yes. happy. Yeah. But peacemaking actually deals with the issues yeah. so that you can. That's a, right. A piece, and and a it starts piece. in your heart, doesn't it? It's making heart, peace yeah. with the truth in your heart yeah. that you can then give it out. That's right. Yeah. 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 Amazing. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. It's good. Yeah. I do want to encourage you as well to, to go on those websites and read more about it. And, and you know, nearly a colours to the mast, you know, uh, and, and be part of this. It's, we need to speak out at times. My daughter, Bethany, loves Bob Dylan. <laughs> she even painted a, a, a picture of him on her bedroom wall, a silhouette and one of his songs there. And of course, you'll know some of his songs as well. The times, they are changing and they are. They're changing again, aren't they? Uh, from going into lockdown to easing out of it. And I was reading in Joshua chapter 3 this this week about uh, Joshua saying to the people of Israel, you've not been this way before, so you've got to follow the ark. You've got to follow the priests and the ark of the covenant. Uh, and that was even expressed in, you've got to be distanced from that. It was quite fascinating in, in the uh, things that were going through in, in our world at this moment about distancing and, and keeping separate and, and change and following after that. So if you want to just a, a little rabbit trail down, down that, go to Joshua chapter 3. Distancing, yet moving forward. But as I was um, mulling over all these balls that I was juggling with this week, um, the one that I sort of felt God wanted me to bring to you was the story of Hagar. Um, and we'll find it in Genesis chapter 16 for the first few verses. And I'm going to read it from the New International Version. Now Sarah, Abram's wife, had borne him no children but she had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So she said to Abram, the Lord's kept me from having children. Go sleep with my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. And Abram agreed to what Sarah said. So after Abram had been living in Canaan 10 years, Sarah took his wife, took her Egyptian slave Hagar and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar and she conceived. When she knew she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. And Sarah said to Abram, you're responsible for the wrong I'm suffering. That's blame culture, <laughs> isn't it? It was her suggestion in the first place. I put my slave in your arms and now that she knows she's pregnant, she despises me. May the Lord judge between you and me. Your slave is in your hands, Abram said. Do with her whatever you think best. Then Sarah min mistreated Hagar, so she fled from her. And the angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was the spring that is beside the road to Shur. And he said, Hagar, slave of Sarah, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress Sarah, she answered. And the angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. And the angel added, I will increase your descendants so much that they will be too numerous to count. And the angel of the Lord also said to her, You are now pregnant and you will give birth to a son. You shall name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard of your misery. He'll be a wild donkey of a man, and his hand will be against everyone, and everyone's hand will be against him. And he will live in hostility towards all his brothers. She gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me, she said. I've now seen the one who sees me. And out of this, I really wanted to speak to specific people, I think, who are listening to this today, is that God has sees us and he's not left us. It's really easy in these times to feel alone and at a bit of a loss as to where we are, what's happening, what's going to happen, how do we get out of this lockdown, how do we navigate our way into the days ahead in shopping and relating and meeting with people. And the fears that 
they lurk around there, don't they? And, and they, they tempt you with what's going to happen and what might happen. And, and the, the, when they lurk in these corners, they, they come out and shout, boo, uh, to give you a fright, you know, and, and take you by surprise that you're fearful of these ordinary everyday things that we've got out of the way of. But they don't just shout boo at you. They tend to lurk around and, and make us feel tentative and lacking in confidence and uncertain of what is coming. I think Hagar was in that situation where she felt very alone and betrayed. She was a slave and she was mistreated by her mistress. She didn't even have her name. If you read that passage, both Abram and Sarah said, my slave, your slave, the woman that you gave me. Uh, she was a non-entity really. She was a nobody and, and she felt it. She felt that. She got to the point where she felt so bad she, she did a runner. She fled from her mistress. She wasn't perfect either because she gloated and, and lauded it over her mistress that I'm pregnant, you're not, you know, which goaded her. It was a bait was. and there was offence, a great deal of offence in that. So the situation looked pretty hopeless. And she lived in the fear of her home and her future and her life and the life of her unborn child. And I wonder, you know, maybe, maybe you feel a bit like that. Maybe you're not in exactly Hagar's situation, but maybe you're in a, a very vulnerable place that is fearful of the days ahead, fearful of what it's going to look like and whether we're ever really going to be free. And we hear things that Mark was speaking about, hate crime speech, and uh, it's scary. And it's, it's, it is where we're easily given to fear over the days ahead. Hagar didn't really know where she was going. We, we, we see that. And I think sometimes we can feel like that. Where, where's our future going, you know? Is there a future or is it, have we had the best that we've, we can have? And we have to live in fear and wondering about each other in these days. When God appears to her at the well on the road to Shur, he, he says to her, he says, Hagar, slave of Sarah, where have you come from? Where are you going? Interesting questions and notice, please, God calls her by her name. He admits, yes, you're the slave of Sarah, but the first thing he says to her is, Hagar, he knows her name. It's become personal. Just like God knows your name, it's personal. He calls you by name. Hagar's main name meant forsaken. What a sad name. Fancy mm -hmm. calling your child forsaken. Yet God coming to her and calling her by her name, speaking to her like that, showed her that she wasn't forsaken. She was known and she was valued, just like you are. And God asked her, where have you come from? Where are you going? And you know, she was well able to answer the where I've come from. She, she was able to say, I, I've come from my mistress. She's mistreated me, I'm a slave and I'm running away from her. I didn't like what was in the past. But she had no idea where she was headed. She had no idea where she was going. She just knew she was coming out of something that she couldn't handle. I think somebody listening to this feels a bit like that today. I felt that when I was preparing this, that God knows you by name. He knows the fears that you're going through. He knows the trepidation you feel about the days ahead and what, what is to come. And you may well know what you've come out of. You may well know your past all too well, your history, and, and you might be running from it or ignoring it, trying to excuse it. But you really have no idea of where you're going and where life will take you. You just want to get away from it. I want to encourage you to, to stop at a well and let God meet with you, give you direction. Let him call you by name. Not that person who did this, 
who was that, who has this history, who came from this background and has done this, this and this, but call you by name. Mm. You see, Hagar, at this point, recognised that God knew her. But up until that encounter, she didn't know him. She hadn't seen him with her own eyes. You know, the Bible is full of what God thinks about us and what he knows about us. He tells us that even the number of hairs on our head are numbered. And our value is more than many sparrows. In Luke 12, verses 6 and 7, it says, What's the price of five sparrows? Two copper coins? Yet God does not forget a single one of them. And the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. And this wonderful psalm, 139, says this. It's in the Passion Translation. Lord, you know everything there is to know about me. You perceive every mo movement of my heart and soul, and you understand my every thought before it even enters my mind. You are so intimately aware of me, Lord. You read my heart like an open book, and you know all the words I'm about to speak before I even start a sentence. You know every step I'll take before my journey even begins. You've gone into my future to prepare the way and in kindness you follow behind me to spare me from the harm of my past. With your hand of love upon my life, you impart a blessing to me. You know, some of you listening may have heard this many times before, but I want you to just let it sink into you afresh just now that you are known and loved by God and that he's with you. He sees where you are, where you've come from, and he's in your future. And with that, Deuteronomy encourages us in chapter 31, verse 6. It says, so be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid or panic before them, for the Lord, your God, will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. You won't have the name Hagar upon you. You won't be forsaken. And Jesus says in Matthew 28, in the verse 20, at the very end of that verse, he says, never forget, never forget that I am with you every day, even to the completion of this age. So change is happening again. And we can't see around the corner of the future. But here we have the story of the God who sees. El Roy is his name, one of his names. He does see, he sees you. He sees the way that you take the scriptures tell us. He sees down the road, he's seen the beginning and the end and everything in between. That Psalm that we read says, you've gone into my future to prepare the way. That lets us know we're not forgotten. We're not forsaken. We don't need to fear coming out of lockdown. We don't need to fear hate crime legislation. We don't need to stay in that place of feeling alone and abandoned and not knowing where we're going. Because God himself goes before you, walks with you, and covers your past with kindness. Isn't that amazing? All those awful things that we remember, I shouldn't have done, I shouldn't have said, I didn't want to, do, oh, all those things. He covers with his kindness and forgiveness. What a better place to be in the hands and in the thoughts of God who knows the future. I want to invite you to let him into your life today. If you haven't already acknowledged Jesus as your Lord and Saviour in a, in a more personal way, like Hagar did, I've known about God, but now I know you. Job said the same thing, didn't he? I've heard about you, but now I see you and I know you for myself. And that's simple. It's just an acknowledging that God is bigger than us, that he's bigger than you, that he knows the way that you take and that your life can be safe in his hands. Ask him. 
Come into my life and make yourself known to me, God. Give me a past, good times, bad times, all the things that you'd rather not remember, all its pain and the mistakes. And begin to see him as he sees you. And for those of you that do know Jesus and have walked with him, I want this to be a reminder of his care and his love for you. A reminder that he sees you, he knows you, he knows where you are. He knows your situation, he knows your private self, the thoughts before you even think them. And he calls you to walk with him again. Come on again, get up, rise up and come with me. He calls you by name and says, you are mine. Isaiah 49 verses 15 and 16 say this, how could a loving mother forget her nursing child and not deeply love the one she bore? But even if there is a mother who forgets a child, God says, I could never, no, never forget you. Can't you see? I've carved your name on the palms of my hands. Your walls are always my concern. Walls? What are, what are the walls? Well, our boundaries, our, our life, our limitations, our situations, they're all his concern. He is concerned about you. The Bible tells us that he watches over us lovingly and carefully and watchfully. And sometimes we need to relinquish our ability or lack of ability to sort our lives out and see into the future and know that our life can be safe in his hands because we are loved and we are known by the God who sees. Well known verse this, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only unique son as a gift. So now everyone who believes in him will never perish but experience everlasting life. God didn't send his son into the world to judge and condemn the world or the devil would like to believe you have you believe that but he sent his son to be its savior and to rescue it so if hagar who was running away from her past and didn't really know where she was going can come to a place where she sees the god who sees then you can too and I invite you to do that this morning. God bless you. Mm, thank you. Would you like to lead us in the prayer? Yes, yeah, so I will do. Lord, we thank you that you know everything about us. Nothing surprises you about us. The things that we have hidden, the things that we cover up and don't let anybody else see, that we don't even visit ourselves down memory lane because they're hurtful or painful or embarrassing. Lord, you know, and you love us beyond what we can ever really imagine. And we just want to say thank you that you do love us, that you care for us in intimate detail. Lord, this morning we just come back and say, Lord, have your way in our lives. Be our Lord, be our Saviour, and show us the way ahead in these changing times, in these sometimes fearful times where we don't really know where we're going, we just lay our lives before you and say, they're in your hands, Lord, because you know the way that we take. You've gone before us, you're in our future, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Fantastic. Thank you. Wonderful word. And if people want to respond, we'd love to hear from them. Um, yes, we would. If, yes. You, if you, you know, uh, have received Jesus into your life just now as response to what Helen was saying and praying, then uh, we want to help you with your new start. And we have our little Why Jesus booklet. And so please do get in touch with, with us. That, that's my um, number there on the prayer and helpline. Uh, we were using the number which is now reverting to Kings here. So instead of 254-444, use my uh, number for the moment and then we'll have a, a dedicated number, uh, yeah. the church number, once we start to open that up again. 
Speaking of which, if you would like to be involved with the other thing which happens in the church building and has been all the way through the lockdown, and that is the food project, then we are needing some more core volunteers for that, people especially from church who would share our values and, and be wanting to minister to uh, people in need with the love of God, then please do join the team. And again, if you can get in touch with me on that one. Uh, we have some of our regular volunteers are taking some holiday now and Lynn and Tony are heading off to look after their property in France. Um, so they're uh, going to be uh, easing out this week. And so we need to have plenty of people who can fill the role as well as some of the other volunteers who are on holiday now that we can move around a bit then people are taking the opportunity and it's a well-earned break by the way and if you're one of those mm. who has been helping so hard uh, in the food project and Lynn and Tony as well watching then thank you so much yes, for all you. that you've given and all the risks that you've taken uh, I know you've you know done all the precautions and things but you know it's still a risk frontline work mm. and we really honor you and thank you and yeah. bless you for what you've done yes. uh, over these last four months. So it's now for others to carry the baton. So yeah. uh, if you want to step up and take that baton, then do get in touch and uh, we'll bring you into the team as well. So we're going to um, just pass back to Duke of Morag to lead us in a final song. So get your voices cleared and ready to go. Let's sing together as Duke of Morag lead us in our final song. And let's just worship now, church, as we just recognize the power of God and his resurrection on our lives and how strong he is in us, enabling us to live strong lives for him.
Yes, we're free, free forever, amen. When death was arrested in my life. So I God bless you too, and uh, thanks for leading us in that Duke of Morag. So we're at the end. We finished. Yes. But thanks but so much for joining with us. Yes, and if you want to join for chat afterwards, then go on the coffee room, and you can connect and chat with people after church, as if we would, as if we were meeting in church, but it's on the screen. So grab your coffee, grab your biscuit, or whatever you have, and join in. It'd be nice to see you. And it is a new link as well, so it's the coffee room. But the, the details room. are on the screen yes. in just a moment. So we're going to say goodbye Bye to you all. all. Yes. And uh, we'll see you next week. Don't forget to get through the week as well. And, uh, oh, Tracy and uh, Ruth, we don't have you there. <laughs> we're just going to blank screen. We'll pretend they're there. So God bless you. Have a super week. And bless you. take care. God bless.
Magic. 